to do it with friends Hi. not as work. <laughs> How are you going? I don't, I don't have any paint, but I'm just here to say hello. Uh, we're going to cycle to Tom soon. Don't need paint because it's painting with coffee. Oh, what? Yes, that's what we're doing. Um, well, I'm going to drink it. This is pretty much what you need. So what we have is... <laughs> You need papers, any papers, um, watercolor if you have, or um, um, just even print, printing papers. You need some kind of containers to hold water. So I have a palette, but whatever you have, that's fine. Boiling water, coffee. Yes, ma'am. Um, some brushes. Like I said, even if you don't have it now, it's okay. You can just practice and get some. But you know, these brushes, so you have like big rounded one. So even one brush can be, Good. I just have a few. Paper towel, pencil, eraser, um, and I'm gonna do like leaves. So you can either do, I did that yesterday just for to practice. So you have like, oh, you can't see it. these flowers, right? Um, yeah, so this all made from coffee. Wow. Okay. That's yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, I think what's what um, unlike watercolor that um, you use you use colors here you use one like just the coffee but you use it in different consistency and then you can create all the shadows and stuff. So I'm going to show it to you quickly, um, and then you can see it when coffee places will be open. <laughs> you can go to a coffee place and. Uh, what's the ratio know. of coffee? Hmm. What's the ratio of coffee? Yeah, I'm going to show you. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, so basically you want a few tones, so you don't need a lot. I'm going to do it here, okay? Can you see this palette? Yeah. So if I'm going to take three, I'm going to take a little bit of coffee, right? I'm going to put here, and then I'm going to take even less. But I'm going to put the same amount of water. So you see here there's more. This obviously will be darker, and this is lighter. And you can try to have a few. So, you know, here... You see, I have six different shades. Um, and then I'm going to take my spoon and just put together. So it has to be boiling, obviously. But I'm going to put the same amount of water to get two different shades. And then I'll take my brush and mix it. Is the water boiling? Yeah, the water are boiling, yeah. So the hot water. Otherwise, you have grainy kind of. And then... Yeah, and then you can see, so this one will be light and this one will be a bit darker. And then you can always add more and more coffee. And here I made, this is from yesterday, really, really dark. So it's a lot of coffee. And you see, so you have like different, just play with the consistency, but that's pretty much it. Um, now, the first thing that you need to do is sketch your object. So how many of you are doing it with me or how many of you just watching? I'm just watching because I'm going to cycle soon. That's a great idea. Let me I'm just wait. watching because I don't have a brush. Okay. Let me just admit everyone. Um, so whoever just joined us, so we made the coffees. Okay, so you made a few shades with boiling water and just instant mm. coffee. That's all you need. Or you can reuse pods if you have like coffee machine and you have pods, you can just open them and reuse it. Um, so the first thing that I'll do, so I have watercolor paper. There's a few I do recommend investing in watercolor. Two brands, not brand, two. Um, one of them is 300 gram and this one is 180. 300 gram is better and then 180, which is really good for, you know, drafts. And if you're not, if you don't want to invest too much, but uh, this is great um, to get watercolor paper because it actually holds water and it's 100% cotton. So when you start uh, drawing, you'll see that it won't just bleed everywhere. It actually stays. Um, yeah, it actually stays where you want it. So if, for example, I'll take this as a reference. So I like to draw natural thin. I love autumn. And I think what's cool about this one is although you have so many shades right you have like a million of shades here but you are going to do all the shades with coffee that means um you learn how to look at stuff as where um 
you know, what is dark, what is light, and you always work from light to dark. So the first thing I'll do is sketch, okay? So um, let's see, these leaves, been, like I have it from yesterday, it looked great, <laughs> now they're a bit, but <laughs> if you can see, I'm using HB pencil, and I'm doing a very, very light sketch, very, very quickly, um, just to plan ahead. Now you can use anything, you can use even, yeah, pepper. <laughs> You can use onion, you can use flowers, um, and really, really every, any object you want. Hi, sorry, man. Um, I'm trying to get the sound on, right? Sorry? So, yeah, so first of all, you're going to sketch your object. So, if, for example, here I'm going to do a couple of leaves. Now you don't do any details. The details will be with the, you know, with the paint. So you just want like just a draft of whatever it is that you're painting. Um, and if you're not familiar with sketching, great. It's a great opportunity. Wait, Ravi, are you talking? Sorry? What did you ask? Because I can't hear you. You can't hear me? Oh, that's weird. Now? Now, can you hear me? Can you hear me, guys? Ah, oh, my voice is breaking down. It may be the internet connection. Oh, not you. I'm saying Laura's voice is breaking down. Um, we can't really hear Laura, actually. But yeah, you're fine. Ah, okay. Is Laura here? Um, I think she's trying to... Like log in. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right, I can hear you now. Okay. Cool. Hello, everyone. I couldn't figure out a way to show you this and my face. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's kind of nice. Okay. So, here I did both of the leaves and I can, you know, continue in doing the... Of my, one of the things they're doing a little the painting session with coffee. The what, sorry? I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Ah, and you need a water, just clean water to clean your brush? Yeah, it's like a festival of shit. So, what? so what is that's how we clean the brush. We use the paper towel and we use the water um, and it's very important not to have too much water so we use the paper towel to take the water a bit out so we can use both of them um, and we always work from light to dark so for example here i would take my lighter shade here i did a very light one and i can always test it okay and see if it's enough if it's too much and then i will start applying and always work with light to dark. So all the, the details of the leaf, I will do it later. You see, you just put it like light. So how many, I know Sarah is painting with me. Who else? Anyone else? I'm just drawing. And then I'll paint when I have more time. <laughs> yeah. I've just mixed my coffee colors. So you see, I'm doing a very, very light shade. I put in a lot. So it's easier to go from light yeah, to dark than opposite. Oh, so if you start from dark, then um, you, it's very easy to mess it up. So working with coffee or watercolor, it's pretty much working in layers and working slow and, and small. Now, if you are not patient people, then this is the medium for you because it will teach you how to be patient. So, so you see, you don't have to color everything because the white is the paper. So if you want to leave white areas in your leaf, for example, then you don't paint everything. So after I finish the first layer, I can um, go and with a mid-tone. So I'm not going again dark, 
And I'm going with mitten and now I can start slowly. Just go and start adding one more layers to my lips. So you see with watercolor, you see, wherever I put the water, it doesn't spread out, it just stays. This is what watercolor paper does, which in normal paper, so here I have a normal paper. So if I paint with normal paper and I put a lot of water, it will just go everywhere. So you need to be a bit more careful and it dries really quickly. But it's possible. You can do it with normal paper as well, especially if you're just beginning and just want to give it a try. Now, if I look at the leaf and I have the brown bits, so you see like I have the brown bits on the tip. So I can take just the darker shade and just fill the tips with darker. So when it's dry, it's pretty much like here. You can see here there's like dark bits. So I just dip it in and let it dry and it just dry that way. Why wow, you're awfully quiet. So how it's going? How's the workshop been going? Good. Good. I'm taking notes. Ah, cool. I love it. <laughs> Is good, this a good. workshop where we chat too? <laughs> yeah, I know you love coffee, Laura, hey? Yeah, but I mean, because some of the workshops, we haven't been talking during it. We've just been listening. Ah. So, so we can talk during this one. That'd be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it usually, yeah, usually when I paint, people paint in as well while I'm doing it. So now I'm like, hmm, I'm just showing it to you and you just look at me. But um, oh, see how you see how I'm building up to it? Mm -hmm. So yes. basically, now, um, normally, I would wait for it to dry. Oh, okay, because it's kind of wet. So when you wait for it to dry, so this took three layers. That means I did, left it, came back, did more, left it, <laughs> came back. So sometimes I like to work on a few different artwork together and then go back and forth. Um, but um, because we don't have a lot of time, then I can just continue working on it slowly. So, um, yeah, so now I can start and put details. So if I take the dark one, I can just start and really, really slowly just start making, you know, the details of the leaf. Now with the brush, and this is just a general tip, you need to, um, understand that when you work with even one brush the way you press it is you can get you can work with one brush and get so many different lines so you can get like this brush for example you can get really really thin line i can do very very thick it just depends how i am pressing my brush so you don't need a lot of fancy brushes with watercolor or with coffee you just need one big one like this rounded one with a tip and then you can create from the thinnest line ever. This oh, the thinnest line. And this all I did with one brush. Does it make sense? Yep. Yep. So just practice. So when you paint, just practice with different brush strokes. How you hold in your brush, how much uh, uh, pressure you put on it. And then you'll see how you can create like those little yeah, details. So now I'm starting to put details in the leaf. Now, because it's kind of wet and I'm working quickly, it's going to bleed and spread out. And I can send you a photo when it's dry and you'll see it looks completely different. So have, you know, have trust with watercolor that what you're doing will look a bit different after it dries. Um, yeah, do you have uh, anyone painted with watercolor before? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, but I'm usually not patient enough. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, that's how I felt when I started working with uh, watercolor, that it's, it's a medium that you have to step away. Um, yeah. You can have coffee while you do this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the right paper, so that it never works properly. Yeah, yeah. Paper is important. The paper is really, really make, make a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah, so it's worth the investment, especially now when, uh, you know, we have all this time. 
Does the paper like soak up the water? Um, eventually. So unlike normal paper, normal paper will soak it really, really quickly. So yeah. the paper will be really dry. This will take time until it dries, which means you can manipulate and move the paint. So for example, you see this bit here, this, so oh, it's not dry yet, although it's been like five minutes. Now I can take and add water and you see, I can just spread it out and, yeah. uh, and blend it more. And that's the beauty of watercolor paper. You can just work and work on it like this. Um, yeah, yeah cool. so yeah, most, most uh, like the German ones are the most, the best. I think this, mm -hmm. these ones are made in Germany. Um, for some reason, the German are really good with making watercolor papers. Did you know that? <laughs> um, and yeah, and a hundred percent cotton, pressed cotton. So yeah, they make a huge difference in your, in your work. So you can see like we have like the details. Um, and you can make, so this is, has a lot of details, but you don't have to you know, work like that. You can just take and work with the with just large um, areas like this and make it more minimalistic. Oh. Mm, it's beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a lot about working with, um, yeah, patient, layer. So like I said, the more, like, for example, this is a good place to stop, really, because everything I'll put on this will just go around because it's so wet. Um, yeah, that's what she said. Maybe I should have made, yeah. For example, here, it's already dry, right? Because I did it yesterday. So if I'll take now the darker shade of coffee, I can really create more details and it won't, won't bleed. But if it will be wet, then if I'll do it here, it will just go everywhere. And then really? I mm -hmm. When So do we, um, do we paint everything in the light color and then add dark to it? Or do we just paint the bits that are gonna stay light and then? No, so you put, yeah, so it's working on, with layers. So if you want something dark, you want a different layer, you want the light layer underneath. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, oh, if, if you want it white, you see here, I left this completely without paint. This is white because I want to keep it white. Right. Yeah, and here I will keep it light and I can just blend between these two just a bit. So if I put water when it's dry, this will be light. Now, again, it's wet, so it's going to bleed. I can mess it up. Um, yeah. So you can easily use, um, you can do it outside. It dries much faster, basically. Or you can, like I said, you can work on a different here or a different paper and just go back and forth. Um, well, Virginia has suggested we can use a hairdryer to speed it up. Yeah, but then if it's really, really wet, so don't go here but maybe go from here yeah. because then you end up you know you it around. and then the water will go any everywhere oh, yeah. um, there's other technique that you can use so um you see these splashes it's like that why is that fucking that i really that's like that's doing that. the the splash thing so I, I just know. you can take you can take um, on your brush and do that's not diluted so it's yeah. fine the same you can kind of tap and make it no. kind of like no, this, no. or you can take a toothbrush even and just make um, make all those splashes and cover your. You know, it can go everywhere. So try not to splash like this. Um, Ravi, mm -hmm. when you did the beginning, I had to run off to find things. Did you trace a plant, or did you just look at the plant and draw it? Ah, yeah, you can. You can if you want. I do think that it's better to sketch because it just makes you really, really look at things. It doesn't have to look perfect. It's yeah. not about that. It's just about, you know. So, no, I didn't trace it. I just looked at it. Yeah. Now, I put it here, and then I can also see the light and shadow. So, you can go uh, with, a, with a very light brush and go underneath to create 
you know, shadows. Yeah. yeah, so I use HB pencil, okay, to sketch because if you use, for example, I have other pencil, if you use 4B or 6B, they're too soft. And then what happened, you have very, very thick lines and then the water will just, um, yeah, smudge it, you see? You don't want something that is too thick. HB, 2B, it's good because it's very, very thin. And then, you know, if you go with the water, it won't smudge it as much. So when you do the sketching of your object, try to make it as light as possible because it's very hard to erase it after, you see? So you can see the line, which is fine. And I try to do it a bit harder so you can see it. But make it really as light as you can. Not a lot of details and then you start working with the details of the leaves. So this one is almost dry, almost. But if I'll take, yeah, take, you know, my brush and start, no, it's not dry. You see, now it's, it's nice. It's kind of give you, um, yeah, you can move your, your paper up and down and, and just have a play with it. That's the most important thing, just have fun. Um, fun creating your coffee painting and uh, yeah, I demand to see results. Ruby? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I missed the very beginning when you mixed the coffee paint ah, yep, I um, and I feel like mine is very weak. So just wondering how you get that really lovely dark. Okay, so I too. So you're using hot water, boiling water? Yeah, boiling water and instant coffee. So put a lot of coffee. Only once. Oh, okay. So you don't actually need a lot. Of so you can use this much if you want really thick. Use this much coffee, and then put a little bit of water. Ah, uh, okay. Not much at all. Yeah, yeah. And then you get. So, and if you have a lot, if you mix a lot, for example, this will can last you for a few paintings. You can just take a little bit here, add more water, mm -hmm. and then you have a different shade. Yeah. You know, and this will be much lighter and so on. Yeah, but you use a lot, yeah, a lot of coffee. Not, nice, not boiling anymore, so it's a bit lumpy, which is nice as well. Then you can get lumpy and then and just test it on a paper. Yeah, so this is, you see now it's kind of I can hardly see it. very dark. But also if you're working with, lead, that's the thing with coffee, unlike watercolor that has pigment, the coffee doesn't really have a, a pigment to work with. You know, because, yeah, so it's a bit different than watercolor. You won't get like very vibrant. It's all gonna be brownish and then you can lay it up. So the more layers you put, the darker it will get. Um, yeah, so for example, to get this dark bit, this have four or five layers in it. And then, yeah, and then it stopped observing, going deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, so that's the beauty of it. It's just working with layers and you don't need a lot of water. So, yeah, uh, any other questions? Now you can see my face, hey. <laughs> How long would it take you to dry that? How long it takes to dry? Um, it really depends how much water you put. Yeah. But I think it can take even 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So yesterday I did that and then I went uh, for a walk with the dog, came back because it's so easy to mess it up. It's so easy to overdo it. So, I probably want a timer or something. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But yeah, I know it would change. Yeah. So just put it and then come back come back to it. The coffee, what I work with, the coffee, the big, the big ones, um, actually from yesterday. So it can be cold. It doesn't have to be warm. As long as after you mix it, then you get, you know, it's hot. Um, and after that, you can just use it and put it aside and you can use it for months, I think. Okay, guys, thank you. Thanks, Revy. That's awesome. Thank you, Revy. That's fun. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Revy. See you around. Bye. Bye.